Thank you. Thank you. Don't you feel infused with the power? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's just keep that infusion of the power of love with us as we welcome our speaker for today. We just saw Eric a few weeks ago, and we've grace, we're just blessed to have him with us again, and we hope to see more of him in 2022. So please help me welcome Reverend Eric Page. Good morning, everyone. My husband, Keith, and I made a journey for the Thanksgiving holiday. And we gave our family two years' worth of hugs. We departed from our ordinary lives here on the island for a Midwest adventure. You recall the planning, the preparation, and the packing for a trip and add gracefully taking off your shoes while simultaneously putting all your belongings on a conveyor belt. And then came the adjustment. In Missouri, we witnessed shifting practices on COVID protocols and, of course, adapted to colder weather. We got booster shots, and our family and an exchange student from Argentina welcomed us and initiated us into card games and board games. And I'm so grateful. We learned more about my nieces and nephews ever-changing lives. Think soccer games, school dances, a semester abroad, cross-country meets, college plans, first jobs and apartments, and even law school. Gratefully, we shared joyful times, telling stories, and eating favorite foods. We attained expressions of love and made plans for future reunions. Keith and I felt ready to come home, but we encountered a few challenges. At the beginning, I lost my boarding pass on my phone while I was in line. We navigated a changed gate a delayed plan, electronic boarding passes, and uploading safe travel information to obtain the coveted pre-clear wristbands. Some of you have been through that, I see shaking heads. In moments when my doubts crept in, I would consciously breathe and center myself in the awareness that the divine is always present, and the divine was in the process too. And like any great journey, I came away with some new awarenesses and some reminders. I don't need to take everything so seriously. And I can do what I can and breathe and trust. So this morning, we're exploring the joy of becoming, the joy of becoming. And it's a reminder that we're all on a journey through life, sometimes filled with twists and turns and surprising blessings in the midst of it, just like Doris's story this morning. Each year, the journey seemingly ends, but we know that it's simply the beginning of another cycle and another year. And this morning, we explore how the divine conveys itself as potential in every moment and place, how spirit expresses itself in our lives. You see, you and I are becoming, we're seeking, we're awakening and discovering. We'll explore how the divine shows itself as moments of joy and moments of stillness. The coming solstice brings a few days pause between the dwindling light and the lengthening days to follow. This morning, I invite you to affirm with me, divine joy is revealing through me. Together, divine joy is revealing through me. I am becoming. I am becoming. 
And you can add on to that. I am becoming love. I am becoming peace. I am becoming divine joy. Charlene Landau shared a story of her son online. She wrote, I was pr outside pruning my roses when I heard a loud thump and a cry. I ran in to find my four-year-old at the bottom of the stairs. And he told me that he had jumped from the top of the stairs trying to fly like Peter Pan. <laughs> After a long talk about the difference between reality and make-believe, I walked away feeling that I'd gotten my point across. That was until I heard my son whisper, must not have been enough pixie dust. <laughs> Must not have been enough pixie dust. And of course, in the Disney movie and the novel, Peter Pan exclaims, all the world is made of faith and trust and pixie dust. And isn't childlike wonder worthwhile? Yes, but the story also reminds me that there are grown-ups who avoid responsibilities that come with adulthood. Depending on where you get your news, the difference between reality and make-believe may appear blurred. <laughs> you know, a philosophical way to see the interplay between the spiritual and the material is to explore the idea of the absolute versus the relative. The absolute realm is the realm of perfection or divine ideas. Sometimes we call it spirit, God mind, or even first cause. And the absolute realm is unchanging. The relative realm is changeable. And the effect of the absolute. This is where creative thoughts make themselves manifest in the human mind. And while a divine idea is perfect, our manifestations do not always meet the mark. It's part of the human experience. And the divine itself and divine ideas exist in the absolute. And we experience the world of the relative. I thought about your symbol, too, that helps us remember that we are always connected to spirit through our souls and our bodies. Here's another way to look at life, and this goes with your symbol. There's only th one thing ever happening, the expression of God in this moment. God pours itself through all creation. And the fullness of spirit is always present, sometimes seemingly hidden. In the science of mind we read, we are not becoming this life, but are now in and of this life. There is no other life. God is not becoming. God is. God is not growing. God is complete. God is not trying to find out something. God already knows. And indeed, God is here. Becoming is our process of change and growth. An Aristelian thought, becoming is any change involving realization of potentialities as a movement from the lower level of potentiality to a higher level of actuality, we can become more of spirit. And like legends of heroes, you and I are on our own heroic journeys. The spiritual journey includes adventure. There's a departure from the ordinary world, an initiation into a special realm, a transformation, and a return. In her book, Becoming, for, for, former First Lady Michelle Obama reminds us, becoming isn't about arriving somewhere or achieving a certain aim. It, 
I see it instead as a forward motion, a means of evolving, a way to reach continuously toward a better self. The journey doesn't end. And we know that becoming may include sorrows, hurts, unresolved issues, as well as healing and transformation. Your journey and my journey is unfolding, and the next moment will be different. What is God telling you? In Exodus 3, we find the story of Moses and the burning bush. I'll paraphrase this morning. Moses is keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, and he leads the sheep beyond the wilderness and comes to Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. And there the angel of the Lord appears to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looks, and the bush is blazing, yet it remains unburned. God calls out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses, and Moses says, here I am. And then God says, come closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he says further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And then Moses has a whole conversation with this voice. The Lord expresses his sympathy with the people of Israel and offers a promised land. He explains that Moses will go to Pharaoh and lead the Israelites out of Egypt. And of course, you know the rest of the story. Moses doubts himself. Who am I to go to Pharaoh and bring the people out of Egypt? And yet God promises, I will be with you. I will be with you. And still, Moses wants clarification. So if I come to the Israelites and I say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God says to Moses, I am who I am. I am who I am. Tell the elders of Israel, the Lord has appeared to me saying, I will bring you up out of the misery of Egypt to a new land, a land flowing with milk and honey. They will listen to your voice. They will listen to your voice. So Moses goes to a mountain and he comes back a different person. The sheep herder becomes a leader, a servant of God, a father of all the prophets. And leaving his so-called ordinary world, he meets a burning bush. And the fire represents divine, sacred light, illumination, love, and clarity. He experiences this initiation into a special world. We think of it as extraordinary when we can hold a conversation of God, with God, and in fact, we can all do that. Though doubts creep in, Moses grows, and back in the ordinary world, Moses' personal metamorphosis is obvious, for spirit guides and directs him. The unburned bush, the fullness of spirit, is all around us awaiting our notice. So where are you on your journey of life? Who are we becoming? Our lives may be very full during the holidays, putting up at decorations, wrapping gifts. How and when do you work in conscious time for stillness and pause? What might it look like if you did that? The life and expression of the divine is here and now in this moment. You're experiencing it. And we're all setting up for the next adventure. But the pause first is a necessary part of that. This moment is God as is the next and the next and the next. 
your being in this moment is a necessary part of the unfolding of the divine. So take just a moment to resonate with this all-pervasive pervasiveness of God right here and now. When we pause and are still, what do we feel? Maybe rest, potential, something else? How can you take that feeling into your life? And the stillness and surrender is a time to pause and to plan the next descent or ascent as we take in what we have become through this journey. We're reminded to be still and know, to experience the divine. We arrive at the heaven within, the de delight of God unfurling itself as us, as our experiences through the year. Joy is an emotion of great delight or happiness caused by something exceptionally good or satisfying. And we experience joy as we connect to great potentiality. Think of those moments of experiencing the very presence of God. It was amazing, wasn't it? Joy may be found in our inner worlds. American novelist and essayist Scott Russell Sanders acknowledges for an enlightened few, the world is always lit. For the rest of us, such clarity comes only fitfully in sudden glimpses or slow revelations. Quakers refer to these insights as openings. When I first heard the term, I thought of how on an overcast day, sunlight pours through a break in the clouds, and after the clouds drift on, eclipsing the sun, the sun keeps shining behind the veil. The memory of the light shines on in the mind. The memory of the light shines on in the mind. So open to what psychotherapist Robert Johnson calls a glorious world. And philosopher Merci Alid called it the golden world. Bask in activities that bring you joy walking on the beach, admiring the stars, laughing with friends, those meaningful conversations with family, relaxing with a spouse. Celebrate this season with all the spiritual qualities you can. There are also those times to sit and be with ourselves, listening to the still small voice as it speaks giving ourselves over to the mystery. You may choose a meditation that opens you to the inner world, the inner world of peace, and you can even be present with a greater vision of your life. Set new intentions, let go of those things that no longer serve you. Be still and know in the quiet glory and the deep joy of God in us now. Let us affirm again, divine joy is revealing itself through me. Divine joy is revealing itself through me. I am becoming, I am becoming, and indeed you are becoming. Pause on the journey. Pause for moments from your seeking, your awakening, your discovering and experiencing. The end of a solar cycle, the end of one year, and the coming solstice brings a time for pause, not just in ourselves, but also in the natural world and the cosmos. Open to spirit in every moment and place. Express the presence in your life. From moments of stillness, bring your joy into your unfolding life. And in this season, may we become more faithful, peaceful, loving, and joyful. Happy holidays, everyone.
Thank you so much, Eric. That was a wonderful message. Don't you agree? Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. And now it's time.